Paul McCartney said, In Hamburg, we clicked. At the cavern, we clicked. But if you want to know when we knew we'd arrived, it was getting in the charts with Love Me Do. That was the one. It gave us somewhere to go. Love Me Do would be the first Beatles single released in 1962. For years, the band had been honing their craft playing covers night after night in Hamburg and Liverpool, but they had yet to play anything that they had personally written. The song dates all the way back to 1958, which, according to John, was a complete Paul song that he only threw in a few bits of. Paul, however, recalls it being more half and half. Either way, the song showed promise enough to be debuted at the Cavern. John said, It was one of the first we dared to do of our own. That was quite a traumatic thing because we were doing such great numbers of other peoples, of Ray Charles and Little Richard and all of them. It was quite hard to come in singing Love Me Do. We thought our numbers were a bit wet, but we gradually broke that down and decided to try them. In recording the track, the band took three stabs at it with three different sessions. Initially, the group used it for their audition with EMI, with Pete Best on drums. That version can be heard on Anthology 1, and you can find a link to it below. Then the group came back to record a version with Ringo. Something still wasn't quite right, and the band came back for a third try with one major change. For this final session, Ringo would be replaced by session drummer Andy White. The decision was made by producer George Martin, and despite initial resentment from Ringo, they eventually buried the hatchet and moved on. The version with Andy is what is heard on the single and the album, where Ringo is relegated to only the tambourine. Ringo's drumming can be heard on the Past Masters release. You can find all these versions linked below. Martin also suggested adding a harmonica to the track to give it a sort of blues skiffle feel. This task would be given to John, which in turn gave some solo vocals to Paul. Paul said, The lyrics crossed over the harmonica solo, so I suddenly got thrown the big open line, Love Me Do, where everything stopped. Until that session, John had always done it. I didn't even know how to sing it. I'd never done it before. I could still hear the nervousness in my voice. We were downstairs in number two studio, and I remember looking up to the big window afterwards, and George Martin was saying, Jolly good. Love Me Do would be released on the 5th of October, 1962 in the UK, but wouldn't see a US release until 1964. The song peaked at number 17 in the UK and sold well in Liverpool and Germany. There was some contention, however, with the song's success, as it was long rumored that manager Brian Epstein bought many copies to drive up sales. While this has never been confirmed, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. And at the end of the day, the music was good enough to stand on its own, with or without Brian. While many Beatles fans were excited to get their hands on the single, and for many signified the beginning of one of the greatest musical events in history, it wasn't lost on the group themselves. Despite Ringo not playing drums on the initial release, he would say years later, for me, that was more important than anything else. The first piece of plastic. You can't believe how great that was. It was so wonderful. We were on a record. Well said, Ringo. The content on this channel is made possible from viewers like you. Help the channel grow by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.